I, I, I knew about that incident that happened in Ayam, that was Ayamba, you know, Cookie State. Uh, in fact, I think a day after, there was a report by Sahara reporters where a policeman was hiding with his rifle by the, you know, by the, by the wall. You know, so that, is, that particular, you know, scene said a lot about um, the in police effort in all of these internal security challenges in the country. Um, but I do not believe, I do not, you know, uh, blame police main for this sort of, uh, you know, embarrassing incident. Um, they are not, they are not particularly motivated to to, hand, to take care of these things. That the system has so much been bastardized that the policeman on the street do not think that he owes that the society obligation to stick out his neck to confront maybe robbery and stuff. Um, you know, you ask the question whether the military have been overstretched. Now, if you remember what happened at Ayimba that day, the police guys were no longer, were no longer to be found. It took the, the effort of the, you know, uh, troops around that area, stationed in that area, to uh, actually repel the robbers. And, and indeed, I understood that they actually killed four, about four or th uh, three or four of them. And then, you know, they recovered some rifles and, of course, uh, you know, eventually, you know, stopped the, the attack on the banks. Now, this, this speaks about the fact that our internal security operations structure um, has been, you know, uh, let me use the word bastardized. To the point that the lead agency that ought to be the Nigeria police have now been relegated to the background and they become and, and they've gone back to become the almost uh they have uh, let me say put this way they've abdicated their responsibility to the la the, the otherwise last line of defense which is supposed to be the military it was it was it was designed to the point that military ought to be the, the last responders you know to any internal security operation or a challenge so that any issue anything that any fraction of the security the police takes care of but if the if the internal security is such that beyond the capability of the Nigerian police that is when the military are supposed to be invited and when they're invited the idea is that they will take care they take charge of the situation stabilize the situation and then leave and then of course uh, uh, leave the ground to, to be held by the police but what we see now the police are much more interested or rather much more you know um, deployed to do what they call VIP protection that is a very convenient way of uh, you know of abdicating the responsibility um, now some people ask what, what led to this why why is this happening is it is it the making of the police or what what exactly led to this kind of uh, embarrassing situation where the police no longer do what they're supposed to do but do the convenient ones that they, they think uh, you know uh, you know they should be doing now, a lot of people say that the whole situation started when the military guys, uh, you know, encroached in, in governance, and they thought that having police, you know, function optimally might, uh, you know, threaten their their security or threaten their their, you know, that that sense of uh, uh, superiority. So that the, that the military for those periods did not equip the police, they did not fund the police, they did not fund the police. They more or less reduced the police to 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 a level that uh, they could not do anything anymore. Now we have we are currently, you know, uh, being assailed in all fronts by all manner of security uh, internal security pro problems. Such that ordinarily would have been you know the police that would take care of such things kidnappings, uh, banditry, all these things are supposed to, let me tell you, as far back as 1981 or 82, no, yeah, 881, the, the then president of Nigeria, Sheikh Shagari, introduced the unit in police called Mobile Police Force. The idea was to create an elite force that would take care of, you know, you know, um, crimes that are not regular, you know, those, the, the contemporary, you know, the, the emerging security challenges at, at that point. So one would have expected that now that particular unit would have been such a, has grown to a point now that they would be able to take care of all the, the entire emerging security challenges in the country, including, you know, some level of banditry. Uh, but I'm not saying that they should, police will take care of terrorism and, and insurgency. But those, those, those crimes in the society today that we're not turning to the military to handle. Uh, so what is the implication? The implication is that the military that ought to, you know, uh, f focus on serious issues of 
external aggression and internal insurrection are now being distracted by you know everyday crimes and criminalities in the society in in, in, a, in the society today that they are actually distracted now you want to ask yourself when was the last time the military did what they call a jopex that's joint oppression exercise that was 2010 during the time of uh as the president mm -hmm. at that time that was the last time the the the, the military you know, had that uh, Jopex, Jopex, and you know, why why they don't have it? They don't have it now because they don't have time anymore. They don't have, there's no no no, they don't have the privilege of such exercise again because they they are deployed everywhere across the country. They are deployed in 36 other types of the of of, of the federation today. If they are engaged in kid, uh, dealing with kidnappers, they are engaged in dealing with uh, bandits, they are engaged in dealing with terrorists, they are engaged in dealing with. Uh, uh, Sessionist uh, agitators in the South that engaged in dealing with as attacks on our maritime assets, that engaged in dealing with every, every hue of international security challenge. So now this is exactly how to render a nation's military very, very unprofessional. Because the fact that you are bringing them to take care of civil, you know, civil issues, like uh, the kind of things we are seeing here, you see military being engaged in the task forces where they <laughs> chase around hawkers and all that. No, they are, they are being exposed to the foibles of society. They are being exposed to, to the idiosyncrasies, you know, of the streets. So it's now why people now say, oh, the military guys are extorting money, they are now asking for uh, gunji and all those things. Because they have been exposed to that. And I remember in, uh, when was that that I interviewed the then Chief of Defense Staff, uh, FA, a Chief Marshal, uh, Chief Marshal uh, Petering, and I asked him this question about the, 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 the stability of having to deploy the military for internal security operations all the time. And he said, and I remember that, he said that the, the, the challenge is that the, the, the pitfall in this particular thing is actually very, rubs up negatively on the professionalism of the military because the military the troops are picking up the picking up the you know, the street things they are picking up the the you know the foibles picking up the things that are not supposed to pick up with mm -hmm. because they are now being uh, you know uh, immersed with civilian lives and all that so uh, you know the implications are there and i think that time has come for us to uh, sit back and you know streamline these functions so that the police should be able to do what they're supposed to do, mm -hmm. and the military do what they're supposed to do. They're, they're, that is part of, uh, you know, military obeying, you know, or rather, you know, uh, subjecting to civilian authority. If the civilian authority called calls up, up called them upon to say, uh, I want to deploy you to this place, they can't say no. But the, th the important thing is that, uh, uh, you know, I think the, this, this this challenge is not really that of the military because they have no option. I mean, the commander in chief, the commander in chief say, look, I want you to go and do, do, do this. You definitely, they must do that. But what I expect the, the let's say the NSA now to do is to 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 to, to sit down and think and, and 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 rethink this idea of engaging the military in every internal security uh, challenge. They should be able to equip the police better now, mm -hmm. motivate them, you know, and um, recruit more. So that we have, right now we have less than 500 uh, police, 400,000 policemen, you know, taking policing about 250 million people. This is ridiculous. Uh, don't forget that the UN standard was supposed to be 400 policemen, uh, 400 people to a policeman. But what we are, what we think we are, what we are, I think we have here now like one person to about 4,000 policemen. So, <clears throat> so how do you expect proficiency in this kind of you know ridiculous figures? So I expect us to have at least a minimum of 1, 1.5 to 2 million policemen on ground. And that when you have such strength, even then you you make sure that. 80% of that are actually deployed to do policing jobs, not to do the covenant job of you know, VIP protection and then leaving the streets un under policed, then leaving the communities under policed, leaving our forest un ungoverned. So these are the dire the implications. If we don't do that, you know, we are, I'm afraid we're going to keep having these international security challenges because the military are not actually trained to run around to run, run after kidnappers and run after they are deployed to to, to occupy territories i mean they are, they are, they are meant to to they are trained to deploy territories they are meant to you know to not to uh, engage in individual crime, criminals no no that's not that's not their the forte the forte is to occupy territories to 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 kill you know to dominate areas but we can we can't do that now because for instance if if military decide to uh, maybe do what they call carpet bombing 
in say a particular forest, it will be the same. Or us Nigerians will begin to say, ah, "What? What? Are they killing everybody? What's what this?" But that's what they're meant to do. If Air Force begin to fire all their tucanos and all stuff in in any area, people will begin. The same people will begin to complain. So that's why I say the best thing to do, and not just the best, but the only option right now as it is, is to go back to our drawing board to delineate functions. Police know what they're supposed to do. Train the police. If, if the police are not capable, train them to tra give them the capability. If they're not well equipped, equip them. If they are not motivated, motivate them. They will be able to do the job. And if they don't, if they're not able to do the job, then maybe time has come for us to talk about state police. Because maybe the way they are structured now, as a federation, they are not able to maybe one command can't take care of the entire police structure. They maybe have to decentralize the police. But whatever it, whatever it is that we're going to do, let's make sure that police do the job that police supposed to do. Let the military do theirs. Then of course we have the intelligence asset. Because I was about asking what should be done. Yeah, we have the intelligence asset that, that complement the police effort. We have the, the DSS, we have the DIA, or okay, well DIA is for the military. We have the DSS and then of course we have this one they call civil defense. Uh, I think that time has come for us, if I'm not going to make them with the police, the time has come for us to decide what to do with them. Because as far as I'm concerned, they have been underutilized. It's not a question of you know uh, you know gallivanting around and everything. no they should be able to be deployed effectively. Uh, even if if uh, worse come to worse, we can say the military, the, the the civil defense, let them take care of this VIP protection. Let them release. Let the police be released to do the police job. Then the the, the, the civil defense guys can be trained to be able to protect the you know the politicians and the um, politically exposed persons and the, the celebrities and uh, the, the novel chairs and all those people that will, will now deploy our policemen. So how can we afford to deploy about 60 percent of our policemen for VIP protection at a time when we are ourselves not front by internal security challenges? You know why would we now say that military will do everything in the first place? How many do we, how many military do we have? What is the what is, what is the strength, what is the numerical strength of, an, of, of Nigerian military? I'm not sure they are beyond 300 to about that. And you have, you have a, a serious matter going, up, going on there up in the northeast. We are supposed to send many our military guys to take care of that place because that is a serious matter. We're having about terrorism. You are, you are dealing with uh, international, uh, you know, linked uh, terrorist group like ISWAP and Boko Haram. That is where the military is supposed to operate. But not this matter of this idea of kidnap, banditry, uh, IPOB stuff. Come on, man. This, I think that police should be able to take care of that if we're able to equip them and motivate them and charge them and, and give them that. You know, if you give them some more responsibility, give them the powers to, to fulfill that. So that's what I think, generally. The military, their mandate is to protect the territory of this country, our borders and the rest. Why the police is to protect life and property. So it's for internal security. I think the police are in more position to handle this kidnapping and other uh security versus it's very very unprofessional for the entire country to, to be calling the army in issues of in, in, internal insecurity this is supposed to be handled by a particular department of the police professional department that should handle and trebury you understand me just like we have the sars before which were you know disbanded to their ineptitude you understand me we're supposed to have a department of the police in stages whereby a particular ro 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 robbery attack can be handled by that particular department army is meant for external aggression by the time you involve army in, in internal security, by the time you have any attack from the outside, they cannot be able to respond a, a, accordingly. So who are we going to blame? Not, not the military alone. All the Nigeria security agencies are overstretched. Just because of, uh, just because of a little thing we overlook. Security is everybody's business. All of us supposed to be part of the system, and especially now we have uh, multiple security problems. If government will relate to the masses in the security, if the masses will trust the government, it will be easy for all of us to play the role. I mean, don't, don't supposed to come close to that area. There are many people among us that would have done it at ease. If government will cooperate with the people, for my own view, okay. they are not of us. Okay. They know what to do. Okay. All the security know what to do. Okay. It's just that there are some things that hijack everywhere. Right. Hijack the securities, the soldier, police, every everything. Right. So it's not they don't they know what to do. Right. 
everybody know what to do.